Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 17 Haas League round of 16 group we winners match. What a mouthful. Upper left hand corner. Sorry, bottom left hand corner. We got Range starting as the green Protoss upper left hand corner. We got Urbmon starting as the pink Zerg. This is going to be on Polypoid. I made sure of it and I'm very confident in that answer right this second. Looks like initial Overlord Scout's going to be going bottom left hand corner. I'm a little bit curious what makes Zerg decide where to send that initial Overlord on any given map. Just feeling it out, because you can go either direction, really. I'm not, and I don't think Polypoid is, I, I believe it's equidistant across all spawns. Regardless, we saw game one, Urban get a solid victory. It turned into a long-term macro match, and I feel like range did pretty well in an attempt to recovery, but Urban able to sneak initial Zerglings in and create a bit of chaos. We see a pylon at the natural expansion, which suggests we are potentially going to see a forge first. Once again, usually the probe hangs around if it's going for gateway first. We'll see if Urban opts for the overpool build once again, or if he's going to go for a 12 hatch. If he wanted to mix it up, looks like we are going to go ahead and see that forge plop down. Initial probe making its way to the north. Could try to intercept the overlord, but it looks like we have a second probe as well. Which is going to be a slight loss in minerals, but will give range the information as to whether he wants to open up a nexus right off the bat or not. He's going to want to cautiously, I believe with overpool, you can still go nexus first, but you do want to be cautious with the follow-up cannons. And he's going to have to be extra diligent this time, especially considering what happened in game one. So spots the overpool. Is not able to... Well, is he going to be able to contest? For a second there, it looks like a drone is actually moving up to scout. I thought that was going to be plopping down the natural expansion. Range going to be able to get potentially some harassment done. Drone getting first hit versus the probe, which is actually going to weaken it up significantly. So rather than contest... And actually pulling back. So this is going to delay that natural expansion hatchery. Another full health drone moving out to go ahead and plop that down. It's going to be on a bit of delay. So range ending up... A little bit more victorious. We are seeing a cannon first. And I think this is out of respect of earlier stage play. And also a little bit out of position to, to force that Overlord to take a little bit of a different angle. But Drone initially checking up right, finding nothing. And it looks like it's going to move back to the 12 o'clock location. Two Zerglings are out making the way. And that oh, second Overlord making its way to the bottom left. And the probe already staging up to go ahead and drop that gateway... ASAP. This probe wants to hang around. It's going to see a lack of larva here, so sometimes Protoss players will try to sneak. Honestly, I feel like this is an opportunity to sneak a little bit of additional tech, but that gateway is what's coming next regardless. Gas is finished. We have that drone at the 12 o'clock location dropping that third hatchery, but that gas up a lot earlier than the previous match, and now it looks like less of a threat of a Zergling run by for range, so we're going to settle into more of a macro match gateway has been planted. We'd also have the gas plop down opposite end. Urban sending a very early Overlord into the main to get eyes on what's going on there. And I'm curious as to the what his strategy is from here to precipitate that. Looks like we have a layer morphing now. I'm wondering if he's thinking about going for the faster... Going for the faster Mutalisk attack. Maybe three hatch Mutalisk. He's going to see that cybernetic score morphing him, but he wants to hang out as long as possible to guarantee that there, but maybe to spot. And this could be because there was such a delayed Corsair count in game one, but that was more because of Urban's aggression in the early stages, starting to filter in drones at either location. It's also possible he's got an Overlord towards the front as well. It's also possible he could still go 973 in the midst of this. Usually you want to get rid of your opponent's initial scouting probe to make that happen. And he hasn't really dedicated the number of Zerglings. He's just now upgrading Zergling speed. Went for that layer first to get a faster push on tech. So Cybernetic score is going to finish. Range does need to be diligent and make sure he gets that Stargate up ASAP. With the timing of everything that's been behind this and a little bit. So he's a little, a few minerals short to make that happen. And we have that Spire now morphing. And a handful of Zerglings out as well. We do have a Zealot that's made its way out in the field. Another probe making its way out. It looks like one of these Zerglings got the kill. I'm trying to find the one that did it. I guess it's possible that there it is. Ha ha ha! Managed to select him. The Zealot could create some chaos at the 12 o'clock. This is a sufficient Zergling force to engage the probe distracting at the natural expansion. A good play from ranged. 
So that's going to delay the Zerglings being able to engage. So they're dealing with this probe to try to deny information. But in the meantime, the Zealot has managed to get at least a drone kill at the 12 o'clock location. Nice play from ranged. And this, he's, I got to say, looking like a Hasu League contender here. Initial Zergling. Yeah, not the best engagement right here. Ooh, just a quarter attack right there. So still going to be three Zergling kills, but not as bad as it could have been overall. Citadel of Vadoon and a gateway behind this. And Dragoon was produced to go ahead and kill that Overlord on the front. And it looks like there's still no Stargate. Although Urban in the red... Because he had an... I think I missed the Overlord dying out on the front while those Zerglings were dis uh, distracted. And I actually wanted to mention that early stages of the game when you could commit two Overlords. And, you're not, and I think that cannon, this cannon to the northern edge, really forced that Overlord into more of a forward position. But being in the red at that point, right as Mutalus could be constructed, really going to delay or create some... Cause where Urban might have been able to dedicate some Mutalus, get a huge raid from Zero, the man himself. Extractor dropping here, the natural expansion. Looks like we see two additional hatcheries to fold back to, it looks like five hatch Mutalisk. I expect a six hatch that tends to be more the standard here. We do have plus one weapons. Interestingly enough, we have plus one Corsair weapons upgrading, but the Stargate coming out behind the gateways. So that's going to allow faster zealot leg speed, a larger amount of zealots. Range already has a pretty solid attack force. Urbmon hasn't been able to, because of the supply block, and because of the success of the earlier Zealot, his early game economy is not quite as strong as it was in game one. So range in a pretty solid position here. And we're just seeing four, how many are here? We got five Mutalisk. It looks like a six Mutalisk is built in tow. We have no upgrade coming, which means these Mutalisks could potentially have some trouble against the Corsair attack force once it's out there. But ranged, able to sneak out. Potentially going to lose these Zealots, unfortunately. They're in the, let's see if the Dragoon's able to get up and make anything happen. Unfortunately, this is not the best attack grouping for range. He wants to have the Dragoon back by the cannon line, the Zealots surviving, and the Dragoon not engaging Zerglings. But he is able to sneak up. I guess he's now, oh man. I, it looks like there's a bit of distraction happening for him as well, because now he's attacking that Sunken Colony, so he got n nothing of merit in that upper left-hand corner. This is buying him time to let him know that there is an air fleet out, but this is really going to negate the Zealot leg speed attack. Does buy him time to get up cannons at the natural expansion and in the main. Templar archives dropping as well. So gonna be, so we got three Corsairs, plus one weapons just about to finish. This is because of the later Stargate, that's gonna make that air force a little bit less Pungent, that's not the word I want, pithy, than it would have been otherwise. Looking to engage with the cannons, we'll be able to provide some support. And I don't think, I think Urban just wants the map control from here. Might even be able to drop the mineral only or grab an additional base. Hydralist then for transition. No evolution chambers as of yet. Never mind, take it back. Evolution chamber finishing right there. Supplementary six hatchery at the 12 o'clock location. Overlord speed on the way to help deal with the Corsairs. And let's see if Ranged goes for a Gateway Flood after this, or if he's going to start moving out with... Looks like he does have eight Zealots and a grouping of Corsair to try to make something happen. Yeah, the Corsair making out. The numbers are four with plus one. Overlord's going to spot a lot of this. Corsair are going to at least get that kill, but they're not going to be in position to protect the Mutalisks initially. This puts Urban in the red, though, at a very critical moment where he really needed to be producing a lot of troops to defend at any location. So this might create an overproduction of overlords. Looks like we see like a lot, yeah, a lot of overlords queued. And this is opportunity where, again, if Urban had done what I had previously said and grabbed an additional expansion, that expansion would have been at heavy risk with this moved out from, move out from range. And he's still got a formidable attack force of 10 Zealots wandering out. The Corsair is looking to engage the Mutalist is wholesale. Six versus four with that plus one weapons. The Corsairs should be able to clean this up, especially with that fifth one joining. This is the golden number of Corsair. So that's getting wiped out as the Zelts are pushing into the 12 o'clock location. We have some Hydralisks pushed behind this, but this is not a sufficient defense force. The Sunk Colony is going down. Now the question is, how much damage does range get on top of this? How many overlords and drones get wiped out? So things looking good for range. At the very least, there's... So we got two drones and more plummeting. We'll try to keep an eye on that count. In the meantime, Hydralisks being dedicated to the 
zealots, so they're not able to engage the Corsairs. And this is a large grouping of five overlords that looks like it's at risk of getting obliterated. Nice movement, though, from Urbmon to move it to the natural expansion to really avoid catastrophe. And he's now, now that he's expended the zealots of his opponent, he's going to go ahead and grab an expansion in top right. That was an excellent defense considering how much chaos honestly should have been there initially. In the meantime, cannon pylon misplaced at the mineral only. Range going to go ahead and grab this with some zealots and some high templar. Lurker tech on the way. A lot of hydralisks making the way across just in case there was a zealot somewhere out there. Lurker tech morphing is plus one weapons as of yet finished. Let's try to check that. No, still, still on its way. So we are going to have the upgrade lead in range's favor. That's one aspect of the forge first opener which is pretty solid he's running off five gateways rather than something like seven or eight so he's gonna go for Ooh, needs to be careful lost a corsair right there and the hydro is still trying to hunt that down and unfortunately this might we saw this in previous matches it looks like oh range initially drawing the, sh the shuttle away but now going to reposition he's got some high templar with a zealot in this, and it looks like Urmon once again, so he's in the red, he lost another overlord. But he does have troops to potentially engage this, but one good side storm, that's if they dropped! Range loses the shuttle, that was a huge amount of gas for nothing. And Urmon honestly psychic with these timings of the drops, and I'm not sure if this is just because he's very accustomed to Range's style of play, or if he's gotten really accustomed to the standard Protoss drops off the three base defense because and that's really going to hurt range at this stage of the game is really when you need to yeah be establishing your own bases getting your army up on the field but also simultaneously finding some way to slow your zerg opponent down from building just a slew of units and drones and right now the worker count just about even urban is taking the base top right he might be able to take another base shortly at the natural expansion range has some corsairs that direction but urban Fielding some units out. Going to explore, check that third base. Looks like a probe looking to take the 6 o'clock location. Range wants to jump, especially recognizing that he's not going to be able to slow Urban's economy down. He's going to try to get a jump, but Urban's sensing this. Great play from both players here, I have to say. So the single zealot, not going to be sufficient. That probe gets picked off, which is going to delay this 6 o'clock base considerably. And Urban just going to go ahead and kite that full control group of Hydralisks back out. Doesn't have quite the army to threaten the natural, I, was, I should say the mineral only as well. But that was a big, big play. That's going to delay that Nexus quite a bit, which gives Urban more time to build more troops and get further and further ahead. These observers, a little bit at risk. Yeah, they're going too far forward, get picked off. In the meantime, I don't see, so we got some lurkers out. I do not see an additional evolution chamber as of yet. We do have a queen's nest. Am I missing it someplace? Looks like not. Additional macro hatchers being dropped. But that will allow that forge. I don't see a... Okay, there is a second forge here. So ranged has a lot of units. He's going to maintain that upgrade advantage for a solid period of time. Right now, Urban, he's got a lot of lurkers top right. Fanning out some overlords to try to detect the army. He did not see the army making its way to the upper right hand position. With the Lurkers and no Observer here and no si only a single Observer and no Psystorm to support as well as that Lurker A blockading. Although drones in transfer for Urban. So it looks like some of them going to get wiped out. And on top of that, it looks like some Overlords have been wiped out somewhere out in the field. Unfortunately for range, losing some losing a Zealot. But he's got a his plus one weapons versus plus two and one armor. Let's put range in a good position, especially at equal army size. Good size storms from range as well against this Hydralisk force. Range continuing to press in, but there's a lot of lurkers and not a lot of observers in the meantime. Range does have map control. He can go ahead and grab the six o'clock and looking at the current base spread and recognizing that it might be challenging to defend the bottom left-hand holdings as well as defend that natural expansion. He might want to evict the overlord at the nine o'clock and take a base there or maybe start encroaching to the bottom right. Take the nat It looks like he's already sending a probe that direction to stage there. So it looks like both players favoring the long-term macro. It's going to be a minute for Urban to get 
comparative attack force. So though range has not been disciplined with his observers, Sistrom going to clean up these lurkers, but there's more lurkers and I see no observer nearby. Which means this army, although he's picking off some overlords on top of it, so getting something out of it. Finally an observer making its way up. Erbmon has a nearby attack force, but I don't think it's queued up or hotkeyed. So it looks like range is going to be able to hold the high ground as he's engaging this army. And this is great position for range to drop some side strength. The observer getting picked off again. Nice job on Erbmon. Basically keeping himself from getting overrun as a result of this. We have an observer in the backfield, so there's not going to be any flanking lurkers right there. But range getting some good trades out of this. Erbmon dropping 20 supply. And again, a large part of this is the upgrade advantage and also the positioning where range is decided. And man, he's had some a lot of success in this round on this plateau in particular. More zealots and dragoons moving up. This is also going to create a protective cusp to go ahead and get a base in the bottom right before this main mines out. So we can just go ahead and transfer the probes over and keep that economy rolling. He's got all sorts of gateways to work with. Not sure if the Corsair counts remained. Just going to size storm. This is Urban's rally point. So getting some beautiful size storms off. Looks like another observer got picked off as well. Urban working on adrenal upgrades, but doesn't have the raw troop count. He's down 50 supply with the enemy on his doorstep, trying to charge in a scourge, but the observers are all to the right at the moment. More overlords getting picked off, so they're not gonna be able to detect the observers in forward field. And Erbmon now at risk of losing significant portions of his army. Some additional reinforcing hydralisks able to push this back as plus two weapons comes online. The Filer Mound finishing, that will actually be, if you can get a Defiler out, that would be a big grace to help defend against all of these Dragoons. It's a little bit Zealot light, but ranged is now reinforcing with a good number of Zealot. And he's also spending his resources quite well. So bottom right hand base just about to come online. It looks like we do have that probe transfer that direction right this second. So range is going to be very quickly able to transition and keep the production up. And he's already a significant supply count ahead of Urban. He's not ahead workers, but he's in a really good position. Look at the size storms on Urban's front. Absolutely obliterating large portions of this army. Morphing an Archon on the edge to bait Hydra's sin against the Dragoons. Few Zealots getting cleared out. Bottom right hand base at the natural expansion getting grabbed from Urban in the meantime. Few side storms remaining. We do have it a filer out. Consume is just finishing. This might just be enough to keep Urban alive. He's got that Nidus Canal that's very exposed to the front. More great side storms. Urban needs to adjust those rally points to be a little bit more interior right this second. Cause, but because range is just abusing these positions to get some amazing trades overall. Dark Swarm finally drops. That should evict, evict range from this location. Although it looks like he's going to charge the Zealots forward. He had them really bunched up, which is just allowing them to get melted by these Lurkers. But ranged in a fantastic position. Plague now upgrading behind this from Urban. That might... Plague is one of those aspects... That Zergling really freaking out around the Defiler Mount. One of those aspects that can really help balance things out. Even with the upgrade deficit for Zerg. Because it you chew all that base health out, which negates a lot of that shield buff. Or I should say armor buff. Can't use the armor buff advantage if you got no health. Or you got no armor? I guess that's the way to put it. Overlord checking out a pylon being dropped bottom right. So right now, range with a really strong economy. He's maxed out. Still with the upgrade advantage. He's got plenty of zealots to absorb both the lurkers and the zerglings here. And on top of that, an archon. So it looks like he is going to be able to breach the initial front lines. More stuff hatching here, but this looks like it is too much for Urban to handle. He's got a slew of lurkers, but they're bunching up for the side storms. So they're going to get obliterated. And there's plenty of zealots remaining to clear everything else out. So that natural expansion going to get obliterated. The rest of the units just walking straight up and over. I was about to say, well, not an overproduction. Healthy amount of observers making their way up as well. Urban trying to transfer troops in to defend. But the plague isn't here. No defilers to support. He's down 70 supply, down upgrades as well. The units are engaging in battle as they're surfacing out of the Nidus Canal. So it looks like everything top right is going to get obliterated. And Urgmon needed this base to keep up with what Range is throwing out at him. So it looks like Range is going to take this match after some beautiful positioning over that outside Urgmon's natural expansion. Some glorious side storms and some generally 
abusive play. This is a desperation counterattack here. Bottom left looking for a trade. I think I missed that couple Zerglings diving in here earlier on Urbmon's front. Apologies for that on the replay, but it looks like this is going to get cleaned up. Some Zealots going for the cutoff route, able to find some Lurkers there. They're going to have to back off. But Urban honestly, without this, he's not going to be able to... He's got a few resources left there. His natural expansion's mined out. So he's basically, and this base close to mined out, He's he's got a bank to work with. But at half the supply, probably in a GG scenario right here, he's going to try to hold on. He's still got resources in the bank, so might be able to pull out a miracle. If he could somehow wipe out the 6 o'clock and bottom right and utilize that to get some additional bases, he might be able to sneak back into this. However, all range needs to do is reposition this attack force from the bottom right and take out that 12 o'clock base. He doesn't even need to dedicate that much of an attack force here to bottom right. Looks like he is going to back up. Urban trying to take his mineral only to stay in this. And he's also trying to sneak that base at the 9 o'clock location. Right now, relying on these two lurkers to provide a sufficient enough distraction. Range not missing a beat and going ahead and, and expanding to the 3 o'clock location. The lurkers going to try to walk in and get some trades here. The Observer in perfect time with that speed upgrade. Able to crush that out. Now that army's freed up to wreak havoc wherever range chooses. Urban burrowing some lurkers. We already have some distance mining drones at the mineral only. He's going to drop an Observer top right just making sure a latent drone wasn't able to hold that position and reposition. Dark Archon in the midst of everything else, so I believe he has some Maelstrom to work with on top of everything else. Early defensive Dark Swarm. It looks like a Plague as well, but hitting mostly Archons, which they are shield and not a lot of armor, so not going to get a lot of benefit. We, did, we do have two Zealots that got peeled off in the midst of that, but there's a lot of Psy Storm in this army still. We'll see if that's on display. Yeah, that doesn't doesn't help the Dark Swarm. Some drones trying to... They're actually transferring the midst of this. They're mostly going to get obliterated to the Psy Storm. That also gives a heads up to range that he can just back out of this mineral only and attack the 9 o'clock. So discovering that, Urban knows he needs to defend that. So he's now running down and trying to attack range from a defensive position. Range backing up because he doesn't want to have to deal with the Dark Swarm, nor does he want to deal with Plague in the midst of this. And he also wants to line up some good Psy Storms and doing that, he is. You can see Urban Desperation throwing all the units he has to try to defend the 9 o'clock location. Only a single Zealot welling against this. And Range holding position in between. Range, though, dropping the ball somewhere in between here, losing a lot of his supply. And I don't see a lot of his supply filtering back in, so it was able to kill a lot of units. But somehow, Urban tossing everything in the kitchen sink is going to be able to hold that 9 o'clock. He's also rebuilding top right. So where I thought that was game set and maybe a GG moment... Urban able to hang in this and showing some tenacity. Dark Templar creating some chaos. We have some lurkers and overlords, so that will be able to defend the 9 o'clock. There was a big drone depletion, however, for Urban, so he needs to get a round of drones out at one of these locations. Unfortunately for Urban, is even if he takes bottom or mid right, or sorry, mid left and top right, looks like he's a force cancellation from range with the Dark Templar making its way to that location. Yakety sacks between the drone and the Dark Templar. Even if he manages to take all of these bases, ranged holding the three o'clock has effectively split the map. And so he's gonna end up with a stronger economy throughout the long haul and up a base. So Urban would need to attack into him. And right now he's still significantly down in upgrades. His ranged max, range, yeah, near max, doesn't have the full shield upgrades, but is looking solid otherwise, observers dancing out some good size storms on the hydralisks as they're peeling back out urban urban's defiler is really buying himself some time trying to expand to the mineral only just trying to drop expansions wherever he can and just hope that they go underneath the radar of range more size storm bit of a whiff on the second one but the follow-up size storm is pretty 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 solid defiler is going to survive which is actually significant never mind bye bye defiler that base getting detected, so that's going to get wiped out. 12 o'clock is now gone, so Urban is only mining at the mineral only and this 9 o'clock location. And range currently has double the supply, more Corsairs fielding out. So double the supply, a bunch of Corsairs going to wipe everything out, really tax the gas 
in other directions. You might want Scourge or something to try to deal with that. Unfortunately, the Overlord's not really going to help him out. Some observers making their way up. This is usually you want to breach this with some initial size storms to clear it, but a blocking Lurker Egg I'm going to save the day right there. Urban really taxing his opponents. Some Corsair's just going to dive through those Hydalus, several of them falling as a result. So actually ranged in some of these attacks, not engaging with the protective defensive network underneath. He's actually donating a couple troops here and there to the benefit of Urban. He still has that Dark Templar patrolling top right. But it's still Urban's two bases versus Range's four. Double the supply. Range just needs to crack this nut is what it comes down to. Someplace. 12 o'clock location, easy breach point. Yeah, moving with the Overlords, or moving with the army to protect the Overlords. A good call. Urban simply cannot defend at all locations simultaneously. Defiler making its way in. Urban now in the red. Get a, He has a great plague. But some beautiful Psy Storms in turn. Range looking like Thor right here. Dropping lightning absolutely everywhere. Hatcheries falling. More reinforcements making their way up. And the Hydralist count is dwindling. <laughs> Disruption web on top of everything else. I think this is Range saying, get out of the game. Get out. Should have left a while ago. Not in Urban's MO though. He's a feisty player and likes sticking it out to the end. More hatcheries going to fall. I presume Urban's going to stay in it as long as he's mining resources here at the 9 o'clock just because of the comeback potential of those defilers. Zerglings flooding out. It could also be the, a uh, one of those scenarios where he's going to try to wear his opponent out for a final match, recognizing that ignore the uh, G-Force experience in game. I have no... G-Force is not sponsoring this. I wish I knew how to keep it from doing that sort of thing. Not against G-Force sponsorship. It's just, it's not an official thing. We got the classic Defiler, or sorry, the classic Lurker Spore Defense here at the 9 o'clock with a ramp, a very tough nut to crack. But problem for Urban is range doesn't need to attack into him, ultimately. He can just, all he has to do is deny top right and play the game from here and just get some good trades. It looks like a Dark Temp, there's some Dark Templar getting wiped out. Do we have just plus two spines? That looked like it was more of a plus three spines attack right there. Observers fanning back out. A couple Hydralisks and Defiler trying to find some targets. We do have a pocket of Zealots and High Templar bottom right. They're going to try to sneak in here. Unfortunately, that's not going to be sufficient. Actually, interestingly enough, Defiler sw Dark Swarm with Hydralisks still works because it does not protect buildings. It does not help against the Zealots and other units, but it does help otherwise. A slew of Dark Templar in at the 12 o'clock. I never thought about that before, actually, so maybe just as effective at wiping things out. Looks like the Dark Templar are going to get cleared up, but with a huge attack now making its way with everything moving out of position at the Mineral only, Urban going to double GG, and we're going to move on to a final match of this winner's bracket. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.